Hello, Leslie here from Message in a Fold and we are out in Joe's man cave today. He has made some things that are really totally awesome. Now he talks to me, he says, uh, I'm gonna make this thing that will do this. And it makes absolutely no sense to me <laughs> what he says. <laughs> okay. So I tell him, okay, make it and then show me. So I have to show you these awesome things that he's made. Okay, I have a saw here, which you're going to see in a minute. It's got some areas on it that, uh, to me, they were unused areas that could be used for something in my shop. So this is what I built to make this portable, fold up, position it against the wall, out of the way, saw into a really useful multi-purpose tool. Okay, this is a portable, fold up, position against the wall, don't take up much space saw. You can see how, there's the front of it, and there's the side of it, and now I'll show you how it works. really converts see how it does that converts into a into a horizontal table saw well it does if you can remember how to work it <laughs> anyhow there there's the table saw it was good for one thing sawing pieces of wood using the blade that's here to saw. The, the table saw is useful for cutting wood. One of my first projects is what's known as a sled. I'm just going to show this. Okay. You put this sled on there. Whoops, something fell off. The That end over there. Oh, okay. And you see how this, I got to wax it. See how this slides back and forth? Put your piece of wood in here you want to cut, and then just run it right across the saw blade. This was my first project to make this saw more useful, more accurate. Because it's just, it's a $300 portable saw that I bought from, from Lowe's. It's not a high dollar, it's not one of the thousand dollar Grizzlies. There's an area on the saw that slides that you pull it out, now it makes a big area for working on a big sheet of plywood. But I've got a hole here. What can I do with this hole to make this saw more useful? So, I had a piece of really good plywood that uh, well, that looks like something that will plug that hole up, so I cut it so I would plug the hole up. Then I had to put a hole in it to make it more useful. You'll see why in a minute. It's plywood. It's covered with white formica, like your kitchen countertops, but it's real smooth. On the back side, there's some metal reinforced. Uh, wood reinforcing pieces for where I put the metal stops. You'll see what these are for in a minute. These black things are Craig inserts that goes in a router table so you can put a close this hole up and this these things are adjustable. These screws you screw them in and they move up and down there's going to be a plate which you'll see in a minute that sets in this hole and you want it flush all the way across here, these screws on all four corners are what allows you to make it so that it's flush. It gives you an adjustment when you use a plate in here of different thicknesses. Now we're going to show you where this goes. First, we get our unused space. Then, We fill it out. And now... Is the banging necessary? Yes. 
to get it's tight. I don't. It's. I made it. It fits this saw. Okay. Period. <laughs> and I made it tight. See, these are all smooth across here now. Now, this groove that you see in it. If you see, my sled has two runners on the bottom. I had to have that groove in here. So that you could still use that. So I can still use my sled okay. and I don't have to take out the hole plug. I wanted to make my table saw more useful and as you can see in my shed I have a very limited space. It's so, your shop. My shop. My man cave. Your man cave. So I came up with filling that hole and I decided what I could put in there would be two things. Well, my first thought was only one thing, a small miniature router table. So that when I do drawer sides, that I can route the grooves in the drawer sides for the plywood bottoms. Uh, I can do routing different things on that. Uh, I can use part of the table saw to help me do the, the routing. That was the only reason I built it. And then I saw on uh, YouTube, there's a gentleman that has his, built his own table saw that everything on it is made up of hand drills, uh, hand, uh, hand machinery, like a, a hand skill saw. He built into his table saw to make a table saw. And he's got a very unique sled that he uses on this table saw. He's got a sandy disc sander built into this box. He's got a belt sander built into it. Everything is right there in one place, just what he needs and nothing more. So I saw this jigsaw that he had in his thing. I thought, well, you know what? I can put a jigsaw in there and I can make it useful as a jigsaw since I don't have a bandsaw. That'll, that'll work. So I made two things to go in there, which I will show you in a minute. These are the things I explained to my bride, and she got very frustrated with me and said, don't tell me, show me. <laughs> so I asked her to come out here to the man cave just to look at what I built, because she, she knows I disappear out here, and, you know, what is he doing out there? What's going on out there? Uh, is he just sitting and, and listening to music? There's uh, a motion detector in here. And when he gets near it and I'm in the house, the thing ding, 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 ding. And it'll go off for several minutes and then it'll finally quit. And, and then it'll ding, ding, ding. So I know he's in here. Doing something. Doing something. <laughs> so anyhow, this is what I came up with. Um, Probably not cost effective, but it is certainly space effective. The plastic is a, more or less the same size as a Craig router table insert, and that's an industry standard. So that's just about what this is. This is an industry standard. I could take this, and I think it'll fit over in that Grizzly table, but I'm not sure. Okay, okay well, I'll find that out. I really don't care because I don't want to put this in that. This is for the saw only. It's, uh, uh, this is Lexan, bulletproof glass, Lexan, quarter of an inch thick, and I drilled holes in it, countersunk screws, okay. which, which is now flush so that I can run a piece of wood over it and it won't hang up on it. So when I cut, I can slide right into this cut, slide right across. I've got to put a couple holes in it for finger holes to get it out. I got, to, I got to bevel these and put things in it. I just don't have the tool to do it. I've got them ordered, but they're on a slow boat from China. <laughs> hey, the price is right. The price was like $3. If I go downtown and buy it, it's $15. I'm on the road driving. I'll wait for the slow boat for 3 bucks. Actually, I think they were about 260. So I'll, I'll wait for the slow boat. Now you need to know where it goes. Yes. Are you ready? Drop the, the cord in the hole. There we are. 
Okay. okay. See the screws in the corner is why you screw up and down to make sure that this is level across there so things don't hang up. It's not properly adjusted right now. But it will be when I get done. This screw right here is the one that I adjust to get it level. Okay? okay. There we are. Okay. This screw, the bright screw that's in there will come out and go through to the top, but I don't have this whole countersunk yet. See now, I got to adjust it, but see what happens? These aren't adjusted properly and see if it catches? Uh -huh. I'll fix that. There's a store in Wichita, Kansas called the Yard Store. In a, in a lifetime, half a century ago, I used to go there and buy absolutely genuine aircraft parts. Nuts and bolts, floor sweepings from the Cessna factory, the Beach factory. Now why did you do that? What was the purpose of buying that stuff at that time? So what I could fix my crop duster airplane. Okay. <laughs> And, and the FAA isn't, wasn't so strict then as they are now about bogus parts. I could go in there and if a, if a bolt looked like an AN4 bolt, it was an AN4 bolt. Well, with the counterfeiters that they have today making nuts and bolts and washers for airplanes, that's why airplanes are so expensive, you have to have traceability of the part which means somebody has to keep a ledger, somebody has to be a policeman, write down everything along the way. Everything from the certification of the steel that the bolt is made from, down to the finished process of the bolt, and it makes that AN4 bolt, which is a quarter inch bolt, it makes it very expensive. But at the time, the aircraft factories in Wichita had a rule, and it's a good one for a good reason. If it falls on the floor, it is gone from the airplane. You cannot bend over and pick up the part and use it. The reason behind that is some of the materials that they use in making a nut, for instance, may look like a nut is a nut, but one of them may be capable of, capable of resisting the high heat of a turbine jet engine. So if you use a regular nut that is not high heat resistance, you have a problem. Some of these nuts, when they hit the floor, if you've got them side by side, if they're not out of the bin that they came in, and you lose it on the floor, it looks like every other nut that's down there. So you can't use that. The rule is, if it hits the floor, it is gone. It's scrap. These floor sweepings would be sold at the weekly auction from Boeing, Beach, Cessna, and the yard store would go out there and buy them. They'd sort them out and they would go in the bins and they would be sold at their store. And they were perfectly good aircraft hardware. I flew my crop duster for 25 years off of the hardware that I bought from the yard store. So I was down there and it was like I don't know, there's the box. What does it say on it? $20? Oh, there. It says 30,000 RPM router with free bag for 1995. Where's the free bag? I don't know. It's long gone. <laughs> but it was a beautiful little router. It had two bases, one still in the box. And 20 bucks. Yeah, that's that one I guess yeah. and there there's the tools to the wrenches to tighten and loosen tighten the collets up okay. but it's a it's a very well made little router for twenty dollars so I bought it and it's been and I packed it with me it's been sitting on my shelf forever so here it is all ready to go same plate not the same plate but the same dimensions the the Lexan plate and it's is, adjustable. Is that the collar for a bit this to go in? This is the collet. Okay. The bit would go in there. Okay. And then it's adjustable. Oh. Oh. Hey. So that's how you adjust it. 
I've got it run all the way because there's where you would actually stick it out and tighten things up and then set it for the right depth by moving it in and out. See it's got a, can you see in there? It's got the, oh, got the gear oh, teeth. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's another reason that I wanted to use this. And you're going to see it right now. I wanted to be able to route straight so I can take my... Now that came with a saw, didn't it? This is for the saw. This would be the side of a drawer. You need to put a groove eighth of an inch of wood and then the groove for the plywood so the groove has to go right there so I get this adjusted to where I want it I get the router bit adjusted to the right height and then I just just slide the piece through all the way through you might ask why I have done this when I have a perfectly good table saw with a blade that I can cut that which is known as a dado. Well, it takes an expensive blade and I have to take this blade out and I have to replace it with several blades that make it wide enough to cut that groove in this piece of, piece of wood. And then I have to take and I have to have a different thing here because this isn't wide enough. I have to have a different insert because the dado blade is much wider so, you, normally you would set the saw, set your fence over here, and then run the piece of wood past it. And that's how you cut the groove in it. It's just, it's a lot of time consuming. One bit, a router bit, I put it in here, I run it up and down through the adjustment as to how deep the groove is in the drawer. I slide this, this thing back and forth as to how far up from the bottom of the drawer I want my groove to start. And then I just take, I can go ahead and cut my pieces over here, slide the thing over here, run all the pieces through and put my joints in them, and I don't have to tear the saw apart, I don't have to do something else. We're talking about just a minute or two to make a drawer versus a half hour. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video on Joe and his tools and and working out in his little space, his shop. Hey, <laughs> I have a friend in Florida who will come and beat you up for giving me bunny ears. She does not enjoy it. Oh. Do you, Sandra? <laughs> All right. Now you've heard from One Able Fox, be well and do good things. <laughs> And this is Leslie from Message in a Fold. I'm going inside to start supper. <laughs> she thinks she can get away with this. One Able Fox is my CB handle. Oh, no, 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 no. Can no. you imagine what hers is? Mm -mm. One Fine Fox. Mm -hmm. I love you, you old man. Okay. That's how. Oh, oh no! <laughs> okay. We hit the end of the adjustment. <laughs> what happened? Uh, oh. What happened? What happened? Yes. <laughs> I ran out of the end of the case. That that grooved thing. Oh, it ran out of the. It ran out of the the teeth. Oh. All right. While we're at it, and I'm out in his man cave, I want to know that little groove that he was talking about for drawers, why do they call it a rabbit? It's not fuzzy. It doesn't <laughs> hop. And it doesn't wiggle its nose. So why, is, it. why is it called a rabbit? Google it. Go Google it. Google it. Google it. Everything is on the internet. Google it.